Hey everybody, Schweizy here, and today I'm gonna be reviewing one of the most affordable V8 muscle cars you can buy. Now before we get started, I do wanna extend a huge thank you to Jerry Signer Chevrolet of downtown Salt Lake City for giving me the opportunity to review this vehicle for you all today. If you guys are in the market for a new or used vehicle, make sure you reach out to them and let them know that Schweizy sent you. I'm gonna put their information down in the description below. Okay, so the Camaro LT1. It's not the 1SS, it's not the 2LT, it's called the LT1 and it sits in between those two. And full disclosure, I didn't actually know this trim level existed. I thought 1SS was the lowest trim level where you can get that big 6.2 liter V8. But no, this is actually the lowest trim level you can get with that V8. And this is the cheapest V8 American muscle car you can buy. It's cheaper than the 4 GT, it's cheaper than the Dodge Challenger RT. And for those of you wanting to find an affordable V8 muscle muscle car, this is your answer. Now, unfortunately, this is the last model year, 2024. 2025, they're canceling the Camaro, and who knows if they'll bring it back or how they'll bring it back because it may be an electric vehicle. But starting off with the quick exterior walk around, this is the typical Camaro. They actually updated in 2019, and then they updated again in 2020. Now, I will say, when the refresh came out in 2019, I didn't really like it. I preferred it before the refresh, but it's kind of grown on me, and I think the small changes they made in 2020 made it look a little bit better. You got these cool taillights in the back, Back. Very typical Camaro styling. Then you've got the dual exhaust ports back here as well. Now, in case you're wondering what this color is, it's called Nitro Yellow Metallic, and I really like it. It really matches the exterior styling. You got the LT1 badge over here on the side. And coming up front, this actually has the same styling you'd find on the V6 Camaro. So that's why this one is a little bit less expensive than the SS because its styling is a little bit different. And then also some of the performance packages are a little bit different as well. Now you've got LED daytime running lights, but it's not quite the same as you find on some of the SS trim levels where it goes into the grill. The front grill also looks very kind of plain. It doesn't look as aggressive or as dramatic as the SS, but you're also not paying that price. And we'll talk about pricing here in just a few moments. But then you have this heat extractor over here on the hood, big bulge in the middle. It's very, very classic Camaro styling. And I think it looks really good. Now under this massive hood, you still have that same glorious 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 that produces 455 horsepower and 455 five pound-feet of torque. Now it's made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission and this thing will do zero to 60 in the low fours. Some people are even getting 3.9 seconds zero to 60. So wicked quick. And part of the reason this vehicle can do that is because it's so light. It's actually the lightest of the three American muscle cars. This thing comes in just around 3,700 pounds. Now similar to the SS, you do still get a limited slip rear differential, but the difference is you don't necessarily have the same sport tuned suspension that you get on the SS, but you still get four piston Brembo brakes up front. You just don't get Brembo's in the rear. You also get skinnier 245 wide tires in the back instead of the 275s that you get on the SS. The other thing that you don't get is you don't have a rear differential cooler. You also don't have a transmission oil cooler. You don't have custom launch control and you can't purchase magnetic ride control. Those are all features that you can either get standard or optional on the SS and you just can't get it on the LT1. Now, unless you're taking this thing to the track, all those extra goodies don't really matter. This thing still has a V8, still has Brembo's, still has pretty good tires in the back and you still get 20 inch wheels. So I'd say this is still a good bargain. Now let's jump inside and show the interior. All right, jumping inside, typical Camaro interior with some slight changes. You do have hard touch plastics over here, which is unfortunate. Not as much nice materials on the door panel, but again, considering the price point, this is incredible. Still soft touch leather material over here. You got your automatic window switches, automatic mirror controls, lock and unlock, and your aluminum door handle. And then climbing inside, this one has the optional Recaro seats, which feel really good. They hug you tight. Got some suede with some leather, some white, or gray stitching. You got Recaro up at the top and suede headrest feels really nice. Then you kind of have to fall in. That's typical Camaro styling. Now, one change here as compared with the SS, let's turn this vehicle on. Oh, it sounds good, is you do have a smaller gauge cluster display here. I think this is like three or three and a half inches. You can get an eight inch as standard on the SS, but nonetheless, you still have pretty good looking gauges on the left and the right hand side. You got your top gauges for your oil temperature and your gas, and the steering wheel is still leather wrapped. It does have a flat bottom to it. On the left hand side is your cruise control settings. You do still have regular cruise control, and then on the right hand side is how you control this gauge cluster display. Now, nothing fancy here, but again, this is a muscle car. It's not meant for that. Now, to the 
the left of the steering wheel, you got your typical Camaro air vent. You got your button over here to regulate the brightness of the screen. And then up top, this is mostly hard touch plastics over here. But again, who cares? This is an affordable muscle car. Moving towards the center, the one downside here is you don't get the eight inch as standard. This is actually a seven inch touchscreen. It's the same software. It's kind of the older Chevy software, not the same new stuff that they use in a lot of the newer vehicles. But there's nothing wrong with it. It works really quick. You still have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Bluetooth audio. Works perfectly fine. There's no fancy ambient lighting like you find in the larger touchscreen, but it's still pretty nice nonetheless. You've got a quick acting home button as well. You got your seek and track buttons, your phone controls, and then down here are your physical buttons for your climate control. You still have a digital readout for your climate control, which is really nice. You regulate it using this switch. And then on the passenger side is your fan speed, which you can regulate with the vent located down here. I love the way these vents look. One of my favorite features of the Camaro. You got your hazards here, 10 speed automatic transmission. You got your different driving modes. You can actually cycle through touring, sport, and snow and ice. Then you get your traction control off button, your electronic parking brake, soft touch material over here on the center armrest, and a very small arm compartment, but that's typical Camaro stuff. Still got nice leather touch surfaces over here on the passenger side, which is nice. And this one comes with the optional sunroof. Now, in terms of back seats, well, it's probably best not to discuss them because there's really no back seat. I mean, it's kind of a facade. There's really no leg room back there, not really any air vents. And this is a hard touch material, so it's not gonna be comfortable sitting back here. There's no wireless charging pad over here like you find on some of the other trim levels. And then the trunk is also pretty small compared to the competition, although it's actually not that bad, but the entrance is kind of small. So this is a very big lip on the left and the right hand side. So it's gonna be hard to put objects in here. But once you put them in here, it's actually quite deep and you can probably fit quite a few items over here. And then there's nothing really located underneath the trunk. It's just a bunch of styrofoam. Hey everyone, I wanna tell you about Octane Coffee Company. It is the car themed coffee company with a variety of different roasts paired with iconic names. You've got Big Block, Race Gas, The Goat. It's perfect for early morning cars and coffee or cruises down the canyon. It is the coffee for all car enthusiasts. Pick up your bag at octanecoffeecompany.com, link is down below, and get 10% off your first order using promo code Octane10. Now back to the video. Okay, now let's get behind the wheel and drive this thing. Oh, I love the sound of that V8. There's nothing better than a cheap V8. I mean, it just, it just feels good that you know you're not paying an arm and a leg, especially in today's environment where, you know, V8s are incredibly expensive and they're also hard to come by. I mean, starting in 2025, you're not gonna have the Chevy Camaro anymore. You're also not gonna have the Dodge Challenger or Chargers. And so, you know, what other American muscle car with a V8 can you buy? Now, some people argue the Corvette is a muscle car and it probably used to be, but now that it's mid-engine, I don't consider it a muscle car. I actually consider it a sports car or a supercar. It's kind of in a different territory. But anyway, I digress. Let's get this out on the road. And let's see how this thing feels because it's been a while since I've driven a V8 Camaro. Of course, one of the first things you'll notice is just how hard it is to see out of this thing. I just recently reviewed a Mustang and I thought that was a little bit tight compared to my Challenger. And then this is like next level. It's a very tight cocoon-like interior. Whether you like it or not, I mean, there are some advantages to that. It feels more like this thing kind of wraps around you. It feels kind of like a glove versus something like the Challenger that's all big. But, oh wow, there's the window sticker. Uh, wow, this thing has a lot of torque. Um, it's more powerful than I remember this thing being. And that wasn't even full throttle and also not in sport mode. Wow, and it sounds good too. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to push it real hard. It's a brand new car. I don't want to, you know, ruin the break-in period, but this thing is fun to drive. Man, this thing makes you want to go get, like, a cheap V8 muscle car. I mean, get this with a six-speed manual, and it's going to be even more fun. But I got to say, the automatic is great. I mean, it, it, it shifts really quick. You've also got paddle shifters here. And then going over these train tracks, let's see how it feels. Honestly, not terrible. I expected it to be worse. Now this doesn't have the same 1SS type of sporty suspension. This just has the regular one, but uh, I don't think you need it to be honest. Like let's take this corner here. 
yeah, it sticks to the road just fine. Better than my Challenger for sure. I like it. I like this thing. Honestly, if you have like 40 grand to spend and you don't want to get a typical four cylinder turbocharger or even a V6, uh, this is the one to get. I mean, now gas prices are probably going to be what hits you because you're going to go through a lot of gas. But then again, a 20 MPG combined, uh, this is the best of both worlds. You almost have V6 type of fuel efficiency, but you get the power of a V8. I'm gonna actually switch it into sport mode, see if that makes a big difference. Okay. Yeah, this is awesome. And that was not pedal to the floor, mind you. Also, I feel like it puts the power down really well, even though this has the skinnier 245s in the back. Um, I don't know if you need 275s, and you can always get that in the aftermarket. It's really not that hard to do. Uh, you know, some of the things here that maybe are lacking, like the eight inch touchscreen and maybe the larger gauge cluster, it's all forgivable given the price. I mean, go out and buy one today because the days of buying a cheap V8 are coming to an end. They're just not gonna be making them anymore. And chances are the next Camaro that comes out is probably gonna be all electric. That seems to be the direction GM and Chevy is going. So this is your last chance to have a really good sounding V8 and you can build it up too. I mean, a lot of people tune these engines, they add exhaust to it. And so this is like the perfect starter kit for a very powerful muscle car. And it's already very powerful, 455 horsepower. I mean, you're paying less than a hundred bucks per horsepower on this thing. Let's do one last pull here. Yeah, this thing is fun, I like it. Okay, now unfortunately my camera battery died before I was able to finish off the video at the dealership, but I did wanna finish it off with pricing because the Camaro LT1 starts at only $38,800. The one that I reviewed in today's video was around 45,000 because it had a few extra features like the Recaro seats. That is an extremely low price for a V8 American muscle car. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all the weekly videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Schwazy underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.